Hello, welcome back to my vlog. And I am sure that you will be aware if you're watching this in real time, that it is World Menopause Week. Well, it was World Menopause Day or Monday, but I think we can take it as running across the whole week, can't we? Because there's been so much in the media and TV, radio, mainstream media, newsprint, all of that. And of course, right across social media as well. I was really fortunate to do a special IGTV, which was also here on YouTube, posted on Monday with Dr. Rebecca Lewis, who is an amazing GP and menopause specialist, talking about all sorts of current issues including how to talk to your GP, how to get an appointment, how to get testosterone, all sorts of interesting things. And one of the things that she and I talked about at length, actually, not only then, but in previous podcasts, and it comes up time and time again whenever I'm talking to midlife women, is this question of anxiety and raised anxiety, heightened anxiety, especially when you think about what we've all been through in the last 18 months living through a pandemic. So you might say, well, why should anxiety be especially relevant to menopause? Well, the reason is we have estrogen receptors on every single cell in our bodies. And that's why estrogen is so crucial for women. And when we start to lose it, usually from our kind of early mid forties onwards, that's why it can cause so much havoc. And that's why we can have so many health symptoms ranging from hearing loss to dry eyes, to pelvic infections, to achy bones and joints because we have estrogen receptors in our bones. And of course, a big concentration of our estrogen receptors is right here in the head. Yeah, it's all in the mind, in our brains. And when we start to lose estrogen from the estrogen receptors in our brains, it causes specific kinds of imbalances which then lead to anxiety, low mood, depression, and it can be absolutely devastating. And for some women, it can be just feeling a bit low, you know, a bit flat. Some women have described it as that real kind of flatness, that lack of joy, not being able to get excited about anything, nothing really kind of revs you up. But a lot of women, it manifests itself as extreme anxiety. Some women become agoraphobic, they become so anxious about life, so fearful that they can't go outside, they give up work, they stop driving. And little things can become really catastrophized. They can blow up in your mind and become much, much bigger. You might become fixated on certain things. So dialing back the anxiety is really important. So I thought what I'd do today is just talk very briefly about some of the supplements and herbs and different vitamins and things that I found really helpful, not only for me personally when coping with anxiety, but also you can see I've got you know, some of my menopause publications behind me here when actually doing my research and looking at the evidence for clinical evidence-based ways to reduce anxiety for midlife women. So the number one thing, of course, you know what I'm going to say, it has to be estrogen. I mean, you just can't get around it. Because the anxiety is caused by low levels of estrogen in the brain, replacing it with estrogen is kind of a no-brainer, if you'll excuse the pun. I mean, that really is what's going to do it. And that's why antidepressants are not the answer. So many mid midlife women, literally millions of midlife women, have been prescribed antidepressants for anxiety and low mood and depression that's not clinical depression. You know, antidepressants, as I've said before, are all well and good and fine for treating depression. That's what they're designed for but they're not going to replace your estrogen. That's, they're, they're not designed to do that. The only way you can replace estrogen in your estrogen receptors is with estrogen, okay? So I'm not gonna bang on about it, but estrogen, transdermal estrogen, the modern body identical kind or bio identical kind, it's a kind of interchangeable word, is safe, it's regulated, it has not had uh, breast cancer links, it's not had blood clot links. Those have been links with older types of HRT that you take as a pill clotting factors because it goes through the liver, that's why there's a very small clotting risk, but not if it's transdermal, not if it goes through the skin in a gel or a patch or a spray. Anyway, you know, you can find lots more information. I've got publications, there are lots of websites, there's the Balance app, there's the Menopause Charity, there's Menopause Doctor, so many resources that you can go to. So anyway, so fundamentally, do please, if you are midlife and you are thinking that your estrogen levels are beginning to go a bit erratic, or maybe you're later in years, then do please investigate replacing estrogen. 
Now, of course, if we're talking HRT, and I will come on to talk about vitamins and herbs in just a minute, but if we are on the subject of HRT, if you still have a uterus, so if you still have your womb, you haven't had a hysterectomy, um, or your ovaries removed, then you, uh, your uterus removed rather, you will need progesterone. So what progesterone does as part of HRT, it protects the lining of the uterus. So alongside estrogen, you need your progesterone for that protection. If you've had a hysterectomy, then you don't need it. You just need your estrogen. So this is what eutrogestin looks like. If you haven't seen it, it comes in little blister packs like this, just one in the evening. And the reason actually why I mention it in relation to anxiety is progesterone can be very calming. And in fact, they say that if you've got eutrogestin to take it at night, take it at bedtime, because it can just make you slightly sleepy. I mean, not dramatically so. It's not like it's got, you know, may, may cause drowsiness or whatever and you can't use machinery when you take it. But it does say take one at night because it can help to take the edge off uh, insomnia. And that can be a useful thing. And in fact, when we're talking about anxiety and particularly for menopause anxiety, it's really important that we really look after our sleep, protect our sleep, because we know that so many of the mental health issues are helped with good quality sleep. So how do we have better quality sleep? Well, I sound like a broken record, but estrogen helps you sleep, okay? Estrogen really does help you get through the night. And I know so many people, and I'm sure there'll be lots of comments, thank you for all your comments underneath here, uh, talking about how sleep has been dramatically helped with estrogen. If you want to share anything, by the way, please do in the comments below. It's really helpful to share experiences, especially positive experiences with other women who are looking at this on YouTube. Maybe for the first time you've been directed to it. So, Oestrogen, very helpful for sleep. Other things that are really helpful for sleep and anxiety. My favourite mineral has to be magnesium. This is the one that I take. It's by Strong Nutrients. It's a magnesium uh, supplement. And this has 100 milligrams of magnesium. And I take, I take, usually take two in the evening. Yeah, it says you can take between one and four. Um, so it's up to you to find your dose. But I take it about an hour before bed. And it is really helpful at getting a good night's sleep. And if I sleep well, I feel less anxious. But magnesium is a really mighty mineral because it's very calming. It's almost like a kind of natural tranquilizer. And so many of us in our modern lives with modern food processing and agricultural practices that have stripped magnesium out of the soil and out of our food supplies, we are deficient in magnesium. So it's very useful, I think, for everybody to look at taking a magnesium supplement. So that's the second thing I do, estrogen, then magnesium. And you can have magnesium baths as well. You can have Epsom salt baths. The key thing with an Epsom salt bath, if you're looking at that for relaxation and anxiety, is you've got to soak in it for 20 minutes for it to work. Keep the water not too hot because that can kind of rev up your circulation and stop you from sleeping so well. So have a lovely kind of warm bath, plenty of bath salts, Epsom bath salts. So you can't just do a few spoonfuls. It's got to be really some big handfuls of Epsom salts and then soak in it for 20 minutes. And then you get out of your bath and you pack the skin dry. And also with helping to switch off feelings of anxiety, our sense of smell, which comes from the limbic system, that's a little... Uh, kind of area here in the front part of the brain is really strongly connected with mood and emotion. And one of the smells that can help reduce anxiety, and this has been clinically proven, is lavender. So, you know, it sounds like a kind of an old wives' tale, doesn't it? But lavender is really good for just oh, helping to calm everything. So, you might want to keep a little bottle of lavender with you, you could keep it in your bag. You could sniff it, you could rub it on your temples. It's one of the few essential oils you can use neat, safely on the skin. I put a few drops on my fingertips and just kind of rub it through like this and breathe it in and oof, just feel the anxiety and the stress just kind of slip away. And it's also good to add to your bath. So if you're having a magnesium bath, you can pop a few drops of lavender oil with that as well. Talking about other nutrients, the two that I also find really helpful from the vitamin side of things, um, one is vitamin D. We should all be increasing our levels of vitamin D. Now it's getting darker here in the UK especially. And of course, very good for helping to support the immune system. I like the Better Use spray. This is the 3000, the quite strong spray. I have two or three sprays of this. So I'm taking three to 9,000 international units a day. That's because I did my Life Code GX report that shows that I block 
the transportation of vitamin D, so I do need a little bit more. Um, so that is one of the things that I take. Vitamin D is so useful. It's useful, as we know, for bone health. It's useful um, for our immune systems, which is why it's so important, particularly in pandemic times. But also, it's very useful for creating the brain chemicals that help to keep us calm. So anti-anxiety brain chemicals, things like GABA, serotonin, dopamine. We need our vitamin D. Technically, vitamin D actually isn't a vitamin. It's a hormone. So really important when you're thinking about anxiety is to look at your vitamin D levels. The other thing that I really like, and you may have heard me talk about this before, this is kind of a little bit off the wall. It's a crocus extract and it's called Safrasun. It's made by a British pharmaceutical or British pharmacy called the Naked Pharmacy. This pharmacist actually founded this company, used to work for big pharmaceutical organisations and then he set up the Naked Pharmacy, looking at plant-based pharmaceuticals, if you like, and it's clinically tested. Again, it's all evidence-based. Safrasun, so it's the extract of saffron, which has been shown to reduce anxiety and edginess and stress. Very, very good for helping to oh, keep us calm. They also combine this with vitamin B12, and B12 is another really good vitamin for helping with anxiety. So that's something that I have in my armory of anti-anxiety helpers. And last but not least, I like using adaptogenic herbs. This is um, little drops here. This is a company called Life Armor and they make these lots of different drops. They get drops of slumber that help you sleep well, drops of immunity, which are very good, obviously for the immune system. Drops of balance contain adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha. And ashwagandha is one of those interesting herbs that when we are feeling anxious and overwrought, it can just help to take the edge off. So look for things like ashwagandha, look for crocus extract, look into saffrosum, make sure that you're getting plenty of B12, look at your vitamin D levels, look at magnesium, especially last thing at night. And of course, don't forget your hormones. I hope that's been helpful. Please leave comments below. Most of the things that I've talked about are actually available on an affiliate discount code using Liz Loves. Again, we'll put the link in the caption above this little video. But I hope you like it and I hope it's helpful. Stay well. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.